Give God 90, where we're not afraid of the tough biblical questions, because we will dig through the language, the culture, and the history to find the truth revealed in the words of our Creator. Good Monday, everyone, or whenever you're listening to this. For us, it's a Monday morning when we're live. And we appreciate everyone who joins us whenever and wherever you are. Uh, <laughs> um, and I want to thank everybody. Our statistics are in- increasing, uh, reaching more and more people all the time. And we appreciate everyone for hitting those like buttons and share buttons and bringing new people on board with us. You know, it, it is humbling when I look at those and I'm like, oh, wow, <laughs> somebody out there wants to hear what I'm saying, and they think it's worthwhile, uh, which, you know, is good and bad because it, it, it is humbling. It makes you nervous. But then you get a little nervous going, I really don't want to say something I shouldn't say. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jerry Mitchell. You're listening to Give God 90, of course. Sitting in her supervisor's chair today is Myra. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Uh, who will attempt to keep me on track today. I'm not sure <laughs> if that's going to be capable she's going to be able to do that today. Um, if you're new here, go to the website, givegod90.com, check us out, see what's there. Uh, and we do, like I say, I appreciate all the shares, the likes. Uh, people are starting to hit those notification button, bell things, whatever yeah, they are. ring the bell. <laughs> ring the bell, whatever. <laughs> um, and, of course, you, know, you can comment directly on these if you have the uh, free Spreaker uh, account. Or you can do like a lot of people do and just reach out on social media. Uh, We're almost everywhere. Uh, It's a lot to keep track of, but I do my best. So uh, I will try and get back to you. Uh, (laughs) Today is is something kind of special, I think, for most people. I'm not sure how much of this I'm going to get through. Um, When I wrote God's Universe, God's Rules, I, I... briefly touched on the responsibilities uh, of men and women in a relationship. And I had an interesting conversation with someone uh, who read that uh, recently, and it brought back some uh, fond memories of their past. Uh, they remembered you know, the interaction of their parents, and uh, it was very, very good interaction. And, you know, when they were growing up, they just thought that's how everybody was, and unfortunately, it's not. Um, But it started me thinking, is there a better way to explain the interaction between uh, couples, right? And as I was thinking about how to explain those responsibilities, how to apply those in our lives today, um, you know, I was, I was pondering, and, and yes, I do ponder from time to time. That's Some, an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I, I went back, or was led, I guess, maybe, to Proverbs 31. And that, that might seem like a strange place, because, uh, you know, the, the Different translations of the Bible, if they use subheadings, they edit some words differently. And and some of the subheadings used are uh, virtues of a noble woman. Others say advice from a mother. And and some read a good wife. Well, that can be kind of confusing, right? if If you start looking at different translations or if you're just kind of glued to one, you may have... Uh, a little bit of tunnel vision there. And you may think it's directly talking about something that, well, hopefully today you're going to realize there's more to it. Because as I read it and I started looking at it a little more closely, I realized some things. Now, Myra's going to read some of this, and then we're going to dig in and see uh, if there's more here than just some instruction for being a good wife or a virtuous woman. So if you want to start uh, in verse 10. It is hard to find an excellent wife. She is worth more than rubies. 
Her husband trusts her completely. With her, he has everything he needs. She does him good and not harm for as long as she lives. She looks for wool and linen. She likes to work with her hands. She is a trader's ship. She goes far to get food. She gets up while it's still dark. She prepares food for her family. She also feeds her servant girls. She looks at a field and buys it. With money she has earned, she plants a vineyard. She does her work with energy. Her arms are strong. She makes sure that what she makes is good. She works by her lamp late into the night. She makes thread with her hands and weaves her own clothes. She welcomes the poor. She helps the needy. She does not worry about her family when it snows. They all have fine clothes to keep them warm. She makes coverings for, their, for her bed. Her clothes are made of linen and other expensive material. Her husband is recognized in the city meetings. He makes decisions as one of the leaders of the land. She makes linen clothes and sells them. She provides belts to merchants. She is strong and is respected by the people. She looks forward to the future with joy. She speaks wise words. She teaches others to be kind. She watches over her family. She is always busy. Her children bless her. Her husband also praises her. He says, there are many excellent wives, but you are better than all of them. Charm can fool you and beauty can trick you. But a woman who respects the Lord should be praised. Give her the reward she has earned. She should be openly praised for what she has done. Proverbs thirty-one ten through 31. And yes, you are better than all the others. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now that is, of course, from the International Children's Bible. And it sounds like excellent advice, doesn't it? And it really is. Let's let's go back to verse 10 because, and I know I'm not going to get through all of this, okay? I, I already know that. I realize it. Uh, <laughs> we're going to look at, look at verse 10. Um, and, and when you go back to the original, it says, A wife of noble character. Who can find her? She's far more precious than rubies is the way the uh, BSB reads. So let's begin by examining the word translated as noble in some of the translations. Uh, it's actually uh, virtuous or excellent or good. Now the Strong's Concordance number is 2428 if you're keeping score. And, and it may surprise you if you look it up that the definition of that word in Strong's uh, is not virtuous, it's not noble, or it's not even good. Strong's defines the word as strength, efficiency, wealth, army, uh, but it's also translated in other places as uh, capable, elite, excellent, uh, great, mighty, powerful, substance, Troops is another way it's translated in some places, in, uh, in other verses. Valiant um, and warrior. And, of course, worthy in some places. <clears throat> now, why would Solomon choose a word that gives us these descriptions to identify what the characteristics of a wife should be? <laughs> Think about this. Uh, you know, does a wife sometimes need to be like a general in the army? Well, yeah, especially if there's <laughs> children involved. Should she be capable? Should she be a force for good? Should she be strong? Not meaning physically like a uh, woman needs to pull plow, right? That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, you know, Meyer's not very big, but she is the reason I do say that dynamite comes in small packages. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, sometimes wives do need to be a warrior. Sometimes uh, they need to be excellent. Sometimes they need to be powerful. They always need to be valiant. 
And some of us <clears throat> would always like them to be wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Um, you know, that's another story. We'll get there sometime, maybe. <laughs> but Solomon asks, right after he, he uses that word, who can find her? What, what's he mean? Is there, is there something that he's getting at in that question? Well, of course there is. Questions uh, are often used as a way to encourage people to take some type of action. Um, how often uh, have, have you heard somebody ask, maybe you said this, maybe it's been asked of you, something like, D- do you have something on your shirt or you know, somewhere else? You know, is, is there something out of place? Is there something, um, you know, maybe you have a, a, a spot of lint or, you know, maybe you drop some, some food or something somewhere? It's... <laughs> Myra's laughing because the shirt I'm wearing actually does have a spot on it. <laughs> From breakfast. <laughs> um, it was good, too, by the way. <laughs> it, it, it's really a polite way of saying you need to take some kind of action. And what Solomon's at saying is not directed to the women. It's directed to the men. You need to take some kind of action, Right? When, when you're looking for uh, characteristics in a wife, you men need to be the one to take the action. Now, we, know, we all know modern men look at physical beauty first. But Solomon, you know, he gets to that a little later. He, he says that beauty can fool you, men, so you know, wise up, right? It, it's not always about having the eye candy. It's not all bad when that happens, but that's not what it's all about. Um, I, I need to I need to address this as politely as I can. I'm not sure how polite this is going to be. <laughs> Modern men, especially in Western cultures, think they can um, fool around sleep around, right? Uh, And then when they get ready to settle down, they want to marry a virgin. Uh, Wake up and smell the coffee, guys. That way of thinking uh, should stop. If, If you are, if your intention is to be a respectful, respected, honest, upright man, uh, and raise a family, you need to start searching for the qualities you want in someone that's going to raise a family with you. Not for you, not by themselves, but with you. Um, if, you if you think that you can do whatever you want and wind up with your idea of a perfect wife, that's not going to happen until you change, until you repent, until you guys get your life in order. This proverb's not just about women. It is primarily about uh, the marriage covenant and how we are supposed to honor it properly. And, And I could go on and on and on about this verse, but I think you get the idea there's more to what is being written here than just some instructions for the women. Uh, many, many modern, especially Christians, have this idea that women were treated poorly in the Bible. But did you, did you catch, I think it's in verse 16, where it says she sees a field and buys it and plants a vineyard? Yes, they could do that. They, you know, we've we've got to get over this uh, concept that the ancient Hebrew people lived in a uh, uh, exclusively patriarchal society. That's just not 
what it was about. It was about uh, living where everyone was treated pretty much equally. That's what all of those rules and regulations are about. You know, you've got to have fair balances. You've got to have uh, uh, fair pay. You've got to pay your, your, your laborers at the end of the day. They might need that uh, to go buy food with, right? You've got to take care of your of the people that work for you. Whether they are there as a day laborer or whether they're servants, you are to care for them like you would care for your own children. So all of these things add up. And, and what Solomon's getting at here is not just about the responsibilities of women. Uh, it says her husband trusts her completely. With her, he has everything he needs. Hmm. Well, yes. When you have... Uh, <laughs> oh, I want to be a little bit sarcastic here. Say, yeah, when you have a wealthy woman who's taking care of you, of course you're going to have everything you need. But that's not what he's saying here. <laughs> that's not what it's about. The heart of her trus- husband trusts her is the way it reads uh, in the original Hebrew. The word heart here uh, doesn't necessarily mean heart, though. There's more to it than that. It can also mean the entire inner being, and, and that's one thing about the Hebrew language. You, you, it's impossible to have tunnel vision. Because when they use the word heart and they understand what it means, it doesn't mean just with your heart. It means with everything, right? Um, there, there is a different word that Solomon could have used, and I'm really a little surprised that he didn't. Um, but really, that particular uh, word... Miod is when we when we talk about loving someone, trusting someone, it's actually reserved for the Creator. Um, it, it's used in uh, Deuteronomy six, where it says, "Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your very or everything." Um. That, that word miod, you may have heard it. Uh, tov miod means very good. Trust him with all your very? No, it means trust him with everything you have. And like I say, that word is usually reserved uh, in that context for our creator. But instead Solomon is, is either chooses or is given this other word for heart heart, mind, and soul. And, and Solomon may have been, been offered that word for one very important aspect. When our Creator took a rib from Adam's chest and created Eve, he opened up man's inner self and gave access to woman. Now, if we stop and we think about what that means, what is in the heart, or what is, I'm sorry, what is in the chest of a man? Well, it, it's his heart that pumps the blood, which is life. So now, woman has access to man's life. His lungs are in there. They exchange air. When air moves, it's called spirit. Spirit. And, and even though a woman receives that, that breath of God, the breath of our Creator through the man, she has open access to it, first from her father and then through her husband. And, and when we speak, we release that spirit. And that can, you know, that can either be uh, part of the spirit of our Creator or we can speak unholy spirit. We can speak unholy things as well, and we've covered that uh, in other podcasts. But this brings up something we need to understand uh, a little better. 
when men defend or protect women, it isn't because women are the weaker sex. Women are perfectly capable of defending themselves in most situations. Men protect and defend women because by protecting women, they are by extension protecting and defending themselves because women have unrestricted access to the inner man. Wow. Did you ever stop and think about that? Now, to our modern feminists would, you know, disagree with that, you know, vehemently, strongly. But that's the concept in Scripture. Here's something else. When a man refuses to defend woman, He's really giving access to his inner being to someone else. When, when men refuse to defend woman, or women, I, maybe I should have pluralized both of those words, he's actually offering access to someone else, access to his heart, access to his lungs, access to his spirit, access to everything. Now, sometimes, though, when a man is defending a woman foolishly, uh, she may gently lay a hand on him, smile and nod and say something like, I've got this. <laughs> she's laughing because she's done that. <clears throat> um. Mostly that is to keep us out of jail, guys. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I was not always the cool, calm, collected person you listen to today. <laughs> no, you weren't. <laughs> um, you should be proud of yourself now. <laughs> <laughs> I, that doesn't mean I still don't have my moments. Um, anyway, <laughs> back to Proverbs. We see that this isn't just about a virtuous woman. It is about the relationship between men and women. It's about that covenant relationship. There are other places where men are given their instructions. Solomon just kind of combines all of the ones uh, where you know the attributes of a good wife or a strong wife or there's really not a a really good word in English for this and and I've thought about this there's not and and man if if you're married to a good woman you know how how do you express that think about that you know yeah you might call her good but you know is that word really good enough you, you may um, think about all the things she does that sometimes men take for granted. And that goes the other way, too, right? I mean, it, it, this, is, this works both ways. This isn't, um, <laughs> well, it is kind of a one-way street because you have to walk down it together. And hopefully you're going the same direction. But when men and women have that type of relationship, You shouldn't have to consistently, um, maybe maybe I should say it this way, you you shouldn't have to consistently be apologetic. You should be able to display properly the affection you have. And, And I'm not talking about, you know, physical. I'm talking about the, the, the dumb things you do that the other one appreciates, right? You know, taking out the trash without being asked, washing the dishes. Um, when when they have a uh, injury, you know, maybe you take over all the housework or as much as they'll let you. <laughs> <laughs> like he's doing now. <laughs> yeah, you know, she will let me put the clothes in the washer. She will let me hang them on the line. She will not let me sort the clothes. No, I won't. 
hey, you know, I'm going to be honest here. For a guy, you know, if it's dirty and it needs to be cleaned, you wash it, right? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, there is a process. Um, I didn't, I'd never thought about this. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to brag just a little bit and say I, I'm a pretty decent cook. You're a terrific cook. Um, I, I make good biscuits. Biscuits are easy. There's a reason that men make biscuits. They're easy. Yesterday, for the first time, I made bread. Yeast and when you're, bread. And when you're... <laughs> and when, Yeast bread. And when you're actually <laughs> making bread, there's this really weird concept to me called measuring. Okay? Um, thankfully, I was well supervised. <laughs> but... but you know, for somebody who's just used to throwing a batch of biscuits together, making bread was complicated for me because I don't, I don't measure things when I cook. I just put stuff in until it looks good. But making, you know, going through those measurements, making sure that everything was right, you know, that's the responsibility in a relationship. You have to measure things. Guys, you have to to be willing uh, to, and I've said this before, um, and, and women have to do this too. You, you've got to pick the crazy you can live with, right? Because in relationships, if you're not enjoying each other, then you're not going to enjoy the relationship. So you, you do things that, you know, other people might look at it and go, well, that's just weird, or that's strange. But we do that stuff all the time, and, and it works for us. So when you, when you measure things, um, what are you looking for? Does she, you know, <laughs> does she cook? Does she clean? Is she a good cook? Does she clean well? Does she keep a tidy house? <laughs> she's able to <laughs> does she have energy is she powerful is she a warrior is she a general in an army how much of a general do you want her to be all of those things play a part in it each and everything we do in a relationship plays a part of that when women are looking for a husband what are you looking for are you looking for somebody who is strong? Are you looking for somebody who is um, capable? Are you looking for somebody that you can depend on no matter what? You know, it, it's, it amazes me as we look at these things how much of all of that Solomon was able to bring into the first two verses that Myra read. And I knew I wasn't going to have time to get to the rest of it. Um, Solomon writes this in such a way that when men read it, they're supposed to see their part in it. And in Hebrew, it works. In, in English, it gets lost. And sometimes those subtitles aren't very fair. But maybe uh, beginning in verse 10 of Proverbs 31, if, if, if any uh, Bible editors are out there, think about subtitling it. A virtuous woman does deserve a righteous man, or at least one who's trying to be, right? Did, did you have anything... <laughs> This is a this is a loaded question here. Did you have anything you wanted to add to all of that? I think I've voiced huh? I think I've voiced enough today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us, everyone. Absolutely, and until Thursday, uh, we we may pick back up on this just a little bit, and we'll go through a, a couple bit a, a couple more verses and hit some highlights. But I think. Uh, Hopefully, I've given you something to, to look at, think about, and hopefully go back and study Proverbs 31, uh, 10 through 31, a little more closely. 
Until Thursday, many, many blessings, everyone. <laughs>